So let's practice using our newfound technique where we can simplify fractions by simply factorizing each part separately. So how many different parts can you see here? Well, well done if you spot six different sections, right? There's this part over here. That's two, three, four, five, six. Let's factorize each part separately. And then, and then we'll put everything back into the sum. So x squared minus one. Well, how are we gonna factorize that? Well, well done if you realize that that is a difference of square. And so we open up two brackets because we know that x times x is x squared and one times one is one. And then you say put a plus in the one bracket and the minus in the other bracket. Next, I'm gonna do the x squared minus seven x plus 10. Well, that is clearly a trinomial. And so the technique for a trinomial is you look at this number over here and you look at its factors. Well, that will be 10 times 1 and 5 times 2. Then which of these combinations would allow you to make the number minus 7? Well, 5 and 2. So we open up two brackets. How would you take a 5 and a 2 to make minus 7? Well, it would be minus 5 and minus 2. And then we'll just put an x and an x. And that's that part factorized. Next, I'm gonna do the x squared minus five x. Well, all that you can really do here is take out a common factor of x, and then you'd be left with x minus five, and there's not much more you can do there. Then we can do the x squared minus x. There, you can also only take out a common factor, so we'll take out x, and that means in the first term, you would be left with x, and in the second term, you'd be left with a one. Now we're gonna look at the x squared minus four x plus four, which is a trinomial. So we look at this last number and we say to ourselves, well, we, you see which, in how can, how can we make the number four? Well, you could say two times two and four times one. Now, which of those combinations would work to help us make the number minus four? Well, we could definitely use two and two. So we open up two brackets. And how would you use the numbers two and two to make minus four? Well, you could say minus two, minus two, because that gives us minus four. And then we'll just say x and x. And then the last one is x squared plus x, where we can simply take out a common factor of x, and then you'd be left with x in the first term. And if there's nothing left over in the second term, then you just say one. And so now we have factorized each part separately. And so we can go put all of those back into the original sum, in the original fractions. And so the x squared minus 1, well, we said that that becomes x plus 1, x minus 1. So I'm going to say x plus 1, x minus 1. The x squared minus 7x plus 10 is just going to be x minus 5, x minus 2. Then the x squared minus 5x was x and x minus 5. And then the x squared minus x is x and x minus 1. The x squared minus 4x plus 4 just became x minus 2 and another x minus 2. And then the x squared plus x just became x and x plus 1. And so now here's the fun part once again where we can simply cancel. And so we can cross out this x plus 1. Is there any other x plus 1 at the bottom? There it is. As long as one of them's at the top and one of them's at the bottom, there's a x minus 1 and that crosses out with that x minus 1. x minus 5 and x minus 5. x minus 2 crosses out with x minus 2. This x can cross out with that x for example. Or you could have crossed out these two x's together. It doesn't really matter. And that's it. So all that we have left over at the top is x minus 2. And all that we have left over at the bottom is x. And so the final answer is x minus 2 over x. Remember, we can't cancel these because it's two terms at the top and one term at the bottom.